prison realignment began to shift offenders from the state to county supervision in October 2011. A study by the San Diego Association of Governments, or SANDAG, shows most of those offenders are not being rearrested as some had feared. Here to break down those numbers for us is Cynthia Burke, SANDAG's Director of Crim Criminal Justice Research. Welcome back, Cynthia. Thank you for having me. Now, what is the overall percentage of adults in San Diego County who've been arrested uh, that were under probation? Out of all the arrests in 2012, 12% 12 of those were somebody who were under probate, who was under probation supervision at the time of the arrest for the adult. Is that up or down from previous times? It was up slightly when we looked at it before. It went from 10% to 12%. So very minor um, variation considering that public safety realignment did go into effect in 2011. I, I know there were fears over this realignment process that the prisoners would uh, have a higher reoffense rate, but your report found that realigned offenders didn't uh, necessarily become more arrested at a higher rate than traditional offenders, correct? Well, what I think is very surprising is just that 12% is lower than I think one might, might guess if you were just asking somebody on the street. And then what we find is that there's not just one type of AB 109 offender. There's two types that we looked at. There's PRCSs, who are individuals who got out of state prison, would have gone to parole, who are now under probation supervision. So they came out of a state facility to us locally. Then there's the MS offenders. Those are individuals who would have gone to prison before, who are now in our local jails, then get transitioned to the community. Traditional probationers, those who were always here and make up most of those under probation supervision, and those MS offenders, those who are getting out of jail, coming to our community, 22% of those were arrested. 36% of PRCSs were arrested, those who came out of the prison system. So what does this mean? Right, it's a higher risk population group. Um, well, I think what's, they're more, what's interesting is both the MS offenders and the PRCSs, we, they, probation and the sheriff does an assessment to say how much at risk are they, low, medium, or high. And both the MS and the PRCSs, two thirds are at high risk compared to a third of traditional probationers. When we looked and tried to dig deeper though, it doesn't matter what type of offender they are, it's how they are assessed on that instrument. The good news is, is that San Diego County is using a valid assessment and they're assess, uh, assigning those individuals to supervision based on that assessment. And that's important. So does that happen when, let's say, an offender's going into probation or being released, then they are assessed by this tool, is that correct? Um, they are, but what's the big thing is, is I think that difference between the MS offenders and the PRCSs, the two types of AB109ers, is that when we evidence-based practice, when we do that, when we look at what the needs are, we assess it in jail and then transition them into the community, we're doing a better job at reentry. And that's, I was excited to see the lower rate for the MS offenders and the PRCSs. Did your research give you any insight as to why that particular group uh, was reoffending more? It goes down to, I think that um, we have more control locally. I think we're trying to do a good job, all our stakeholders with the DA, the court, the public defender, the sheriff, probation, and it comes down to that risk level. And I was um, cautiously optimistic when realignment came about and we have built on our prior experiences locally. But I think it's important that just because somebody is an AB 109 offender, I didn't want to see all the attention go to those in the high risk people who were already making up most of probation were going to get ignored. They also need services and I think that's what we're doing. That's what the report says. And the AB 109 being the realignment as, as we call, exactly. call it. Um, what would you like to see people take away from this prison realignment? Is it doing what it was supposed to do? This is part of the picture. This is looking at how many were arrested while under supervision. There's going to be people who are getting out of jail without any supervision and we want to know that um, what happens once they get off supervision. When they're on supervision, there's somebody checking in with them. They're more likely to get services. So this is part of the puzzle. I think it's something it's too early to say um, we're, everything's great and there's no room for improvement. There's always room for improvement. But I'm cautiously optimistic that we're on the right road and we're doing a good job. The data seems to support that, at least in this, in this arm of it. At this part. But does that mean that the threat of crime rates going up in San Diego we, we, is over? We don't have to really worry about it for realignment. Or do you think there's a particular things law enforcement can do to make sure that this uh, trend continues? I think it's important that we continue to work together. I know law enforcement's working closely with the other stakeholders, Health and Human Services, to let offenders know that they are being monitored and that there's also opportunities to change the path that they're on, and I think we need to keep doing that. All right, Cynthia Burks, thanks so much for the update. Thank you.